This was once the highest man-made structure in Europe. It was at Emily Moor in Yorkshire. On the 19th of March, 1969, it collapsed. For six million people, television screens went blank. The mask belonged to the IBA, but it also transmitted the colour programmes of the BBC. The IBA owned an emergency mast. It was 200 feet high. To a television engineer, this is no more than a toy. So they gave it the childish name of the zip-up. By three o'clock on the following morning, it was leaving its store at Litchfield in the Midlands on its way to Emily Moor. It was so cold up there on the Pennines that no one could work on it for more than half an hour at a time. Yet, in less than four days, the signals were restored. But the zip-up wasn't high enough. Another mast had to be found, and quickly. It was in Sweden. Soon, sections were being unloaded in Hull. The most urgent steelwork and the base were flown to Manchester Airport. A crew of Polish figures was enlisted in Leeds. So a taller mast, once used by the Swedish Air Force, began to rise 700 feet into the Yorkshire sky. In 27 days, 20 hours and 45 minutes, it was finished. A world record for so high a structure. But, useful though it was, the Swedish mast was not strong enough to carry more than one set of television aerials. So viewers in Yorkshire could still not see colour programmes. All over Britain these last 20 years, men have been building high television towers and masts. Wherever you live, not only in Britain, but in nearly every country overseas, somewhere quite near, there's a tall, slender shrine to this new religion. Why do we have to go on reaching for the sky like this? Broadcasting is just what its name implies. Farmers used to sow the seed by throwing it from side to side broadcasting. All broadcasting consists of throwing electrical waves from the top of Mars. These waves are all around you now. Waves from radio 1, 2, 3 and 4 and local radio stations too. Stations close to each other have to have different wavelengths. The wavelength of radio 1 is different from that of Capital or LBC. Otherwise there would be chaos. <laughs> Most radio waves don't escape from the Earth's atmosphere. They hit the ionosphere and bounce back again. A strong radio signal can travel around the world. Jules Verne's hero got round in 80 days, but a radio signal does it in one-seventh of a second. The problem with very short waves, like television signals, is that this doesn't happen. The signals fly out of the Earth's atmosphere and vanish into space. We can receive pictures from the moon. Perhaps they're getting programs on Mars. There is another problem too. The Earth is round. So even if the signal comes out sideways, the waves move away from the Earth's curve. High towers direct the waves downward, across the hills and high buildings. The higher the mast, the more people can receive television. This isn't the only way. You could have a higher aerial. Satellites could be used. That's expensive and calls for a new piece of furniture in the garden. Or the signals can go underground by cable. That system's already in use in places, but for most people, it's in the future. Meantime, high masks bring problems. Ray Hill, chief engineer transmitters at the IBA. Sometimes, very infrequently, one is lucky. You can use a tall building in a city centre, or you can use a prominent hill in the countryside. But more often than not, we have to build 
a very tall mast to cover the area. And of course, the only reason for building a tall mast is to put the aerial at the very top. If we don't have much ground available, one way of doing this is to build what we call a tower, like the Eiffel Tower. There's four legs firmly on the ground, and it keeps itself up without any supporting wires or ropes. Uh, this is an economical way for small ones, but when you build very big ones, it rapidly becomes expensive. So for the very big ones, we prefer to build a stayed mast. This is a very slender central column made of steel, which is held up with ropes attached to various points, which go to blocks on the ground, very similar to the way in which a tent is put up. On our newer masts, we have surrounded the complete aerials with very large cylinders made of fiberglass, which protect the aerials and the men inside them when they're working on them. And also, because a thousand feet is a long way to walk, we put in lifts to get the men to the top of the mast quickly. But these are on the new structures. We have many old structures, which I'm afraid mean a thousand foot climb up a ladder exposed to the wind and the rain, even just to change a lamp at the top on the aircraft warning light.